There are times when it's not immediately obvious what the initial quadrant is for a Nyquist diagram, and that's the focus of this particular video. So the last video looked at integrators, and what you will have noticed is systems that were fairly similar. Sometimes the diagrams didn't start in the same quadrant, and so it's not always obvious in which quadrant to start a plot. Now this can be really important getting this information right, especially when we move on to control analysis and design and where the plot originates at infinity. So in this video we're going to give a number of examples of the particular issue and some simple solutions. First thing to note then is be clear in your own head is what are the quadrants. So what you'll see, quadrant 1 lies between 0 and 90 degrees. Quadrant 2 typically is written in terms of negatives, so between minus 180 and minus 270. Quadrant 3 between minus 90 and minus 180, and quadrant 4 between 0 and minus 90. So if we've got the boat diagrams already, then you'll see identifying the quadrants is straightforward. So here's an example. You'll see we've already got the boat diagram. So for low frequencies, you can see the phase is between 0 and minus 90, and therefore clearly this is in quadrant 4. For high frequencies, the phase is between minus 90 and minus 180, and therefore clearly this is in quadrant 3. Here's some other examples, and you'll see the technique here is simply to write onto the boat diagram, if it's not obvious to you, where the quadrant is. So between 0 and minus 90 is quadrant 4, between minus 90 and minus 180 is quadrant 3. So you'll see for the two examples here, the blue one starts in quadrant 4, moves in to quadrant 3. The green one is always in quadrant 3. Some more examples. So again, we suggest you put the quadrants down before you start. So between minus 90 and minus 180 is quadrant 3. Between minus 180 and minus 270 is quadrant 2, and below minus 270, you're moving into quadrant 1. So you'll see the red plot starts in quadrant 2 and moves in to quadrant 1. The green plot starts in quadrant 3, goes through quadrant 2, and ends up in quadrant 1. The blue plot is always in quadrant 3. So what can we say here? If you've got a good boat diagram, then the quadrants are probably obvious. However, what are you going to do if the boat diagram is not readily available and you have to do some form of sketching or elementary analysis? So we need to look at paper pen exercises which are simple, which enable us to get this quadrant where we don't have the information already. What we're going to suggest is method one is what I've called a low frequency analysis procedure. And all we're going to do here is a first order Taylor series expansion of each factor in the denominator. And because this is a first order expansion, it will be valid for small values of omega. So here's an example. You can see if I have 1 over j omega plus a, then the first order Taylor series expansion is what I've written down here. 1 over a times 1 minus j omega over a. Now just as a note, we're going to ignore this 1 over a term, this term here. We're going to ignore it because it has no impact on the face. What do you do next? You're going to multiply out all the factors in the system and then we're only going to take the linear term by which we mean the coefficient of omega because what we can say is if omega is small, then omega is much bigger than omega squared, which is much bigger than omega cubed, and so on. Now I'll do an example, and after that it should be obvious. So here we go. We've got the example 9 j omega plus 3 over j omega plus 1 j omega plus 2. So the first thing is to write the Taylor series expansions of these two denominator factors. So there we go. We see the Taylor series expansion of 1 over j omega plus 1 is going to be 1 minus j omega, and that's the first order Taylor series. For 1 over j omega plus 2, you're going to get 1 minus j omega over 2 all times a half. 
So I substitute these in now to the original system and multiply it out. So what we're going to do is going to say there's the original function. Replacing the denominators by the Taylor series, we end up with this. So we've now got three factors which we can multiply out. So the next step is to actually do this multiplication. And this is what we get. We end up with 3 plus j omega times 9 minus 3 minus 3 over 2 plus, and here's the key bit, you'll see we haven't written out all the higher order terms, the omega squared and the omega cubed, because what we're saying is if omega is small, we can ignore those terms. So what do we get left with? We get left with g of j omega is approximately 3 plus j omega times 9 over 2. And that's obviously for small omega. And what this tells you is that for low frequencies, you are in the first quadrant. So the phase is positive, and indeed the gain is increasing. Let's try this then on two simple examples. So first, g of s equals s plus 0 0.5 over s plus 1, s plus 2. So if I write the denominator factors straight out as their first order Taylor series, so I've got j omega plus 0 0.5 into 1 minus j omega, so that's the first order Taylor series for 1 over 1 plus j omega, and then I've got 1 minus j omega over 2, which is the first order Taylor series for 1 over j omega plus 2, ignoring any constants. And then if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 0 0.5 plus minus a quarter minus a half plus one into j omega plus dot 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 I'm not going to calculate the higher order terms because I know I'm going to ignore them and then I can simplify this to 0 0.5 plus j omega over 4 and clearly this is in quadrant 1 what about the second example so you'll see all I've done here is change the zero. So I can now write j omega plus 1.2 into 1 minus j omega, 1 minus j omega over 2. If I multiply this out, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1.2 and then plus, and you'll get minus 0.6 minus 1.2 plus 1 into j omega plus, again, high order terms, which I'm going to ignore. And that gives me 1.2 minus 0.8j omega, which in this case is in quadrant 4. Next, we're going to look at an alternative, a different sort of method, which you might prefer in some cases. And the alternative method is summarized at the bottom. What we're going to do is compute the phase explicitly, but the key thing is at a small value of omega. And what we mean by small is relative to the other poles and zeros. So we're simply going to calculate the phase um, using the full phase argument. So we'll do this through, through some examples. We'll start with this example here. You see we've got 9 into s plus a third of s, s plus 1, s plus 2. So first I need to write out the phase explicitly and then substitute in a small omega. So the key part, parts of the phase are this bit here. You see I've got 10 to the minus 1 omega over 0 0.33 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 2. And indeed there's also a minus 90 from the integrator. And what I'll do next is I substitute in a small value of omega there is 0 0.1, which is small compared to the 1, 2, and a third. And I get this, 8 minus 90, in other words, minus 82 degrees. And so we can see that this system starts in quadrant 4. What about this one then? 5 times s plus 0 0.6 over s, s plus 1, s plus 2. So again, I simply write out the argument explicitly. There it is. 10 to the minus 1 omega over 0 0.6 minus 10 to the minus 1 omega minus 10 to the minus 1 omega over 2 and again there'll be a minus 90 because of the integrator substitute in omega equals 0 0.1 and I get this 0 0.88 minus 90 which again is in quadrant 4 next example this one here 
and you'll see it's the same procedure I've calculated the phase exactly and what do I get at omega equals 0.1 I get minus 1.44 minus 90 where clearly the answer is now in quadrant 3 and you'll see the same procedure for the last example and again you'll see we end up in quadrant 3 now if we plot the Nyquist plots for these four examples you'll see as expected the first two begin in quadrant 4 and the second two begin in quadrant 3 so what we've shown is a very simple calculation allows you to decide do I start the plot over here or do I start the plot over here so we demonstrated you can easily determine the initial quadrant if you're given the Bode diagram but then what we've done is we've given you two simple techniques for determining the initial quadrant when this might not be obvious now a remark to finish with um, given that we've all got computers these days this type of paper pen exercise might not be needed very much because it's still somewhat tedious and you might decide I'll be quicker just turning the computer on rather than doing this algebra that's for you to decide but hopefully the uh, method will give a little bit of insight into the shapes and this could be useful later on.